Howdy, Beefloobart here, and welcome. Yeah, I had everything set up, ready to go, or thought I was ready to go, and reopen everything back up again, and suddenly everything has an update that has to be done now. Discord suddenly decided it was going to update, and then says, oh, okay, now you're ready for an, an, uh, you know, a new patch, and my recording software, same thing, and then don't show that ever again. Um, so everything had to have an update right then, as soon as I'm ready to start streaming. So, um, yeah. So I am currently working again on a project that uh, I deleted. So I did not intentionally delete it, but I did. So pretty much starting from the ground up again. And... Hi. Might speed that up a little bit. It's a little bit on the slow side. But I have also been fighting a head and chest cold for the last few days, so. Now that's not wanting to work. I even had that working correctly, and now it's bugging everything that I'm trying to redo to repair in this setup that I deleted is not wanting to work correctly. That's jumping up in the air now, and yeah. So, as the title suggests on there, I was going to discuss, and some other people were asking me about um, teams and getting a team set up to work on Unreal Engine 4 projects and making games and so forth, and I figure that'll kind of fit along with the, the basic training stuff. Probably should have put that in the title as well, but yeah, whatever. Just waiting for them to show up, which they said they would be here for this stream, and I don't see them. The trouble with forming a team on Unreal to build a project is unless you have a development budget already allocated, yeah, I'm going to go through the basic steps of actually creating a game from start to finish and has you know a lot to do with choices made beforehand and honestly one of the biggest considerations to look at is proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance doesn't guarantee it but it helps to prevent it so think about what you want your game to be what do you want in the end and as I've said before even if you just use Notepad, um, I've had to restart and nothing is open right now. I don't. Yep, I do have Steam back up. But one of the things that I do is whenever I'm planning out a game, is I will actually go through and come up with the concept of what I want the game to be, write down everything, just loose thoughts just I want my game to be this I want it to do that I want it to be this kind of theme and I want the, you know all the details just throw it all into one big jumble and then go back through and create another one where you just go back and you sort through all those details how do I want the game what kind of game is it going to be is it going to be a first person third person is it going to be a top down is it going to be a whatever then you know if if you don't even have a name available if you do have a name that's great um, start from there and start saying, okay, this is how the player gets to become what they are. Um, this is the theme. This is the whatever. Break it down and build a, a dev log or a, a, a build concept idea. And this is primarily for yourself. And the reason why you want that is so you can go back to it. And if you start losing your direction on where you're going with your project, refer back to it and say oh okay this is what I'm doing this is where I need to work on this is what I need to start doing so if you have got a good solid knowledge base of what you want from your project then you can go from there um, so next step would be is do you have a budget do you have the ability to buy your assets. Um, what is your development budget going to look like? You got to have something in your budget. You got to have, 
You know, even you know, with using Unreal Engine 4 stuff, Unreal Engine 4 is free to download, free to use, free to build your games off of, and it doesn't cost you anything until you reach a certain threshold. And then you do have to pay them at, at a certain threshold. Um, where are you going to release? You're going to release on, on your own platform, you're going to release on Steam, HIO, Game Jolt, where are you going to release your game to? Get all this stuff ironed out and hammered out beforehand, and then start thinking about how you're going to integrate your team. So with that, how do you, you plan on getting your team together? Are you going to, which I'm not going to do that, I'm going to work on my character. Um, once you've got all your, your ducks in a row, all your shit together, essentially, um, you can then start thinking about going into and looking for other players to help or other developers to help you. Don't expect to just, hey, I've got this really cool idea and I'm going to build a team and expect that um, you're going to have a, a huge development team overnight. It's just not going to happen. Um, and that's sadly because trying to get people to share your vision if you're not willing to pay people right off the bat. If you don't have a, a budget to pay people to work full-time for you or even part-time for you, then you're stuck trying to get people that will share your vision and try to work towards a common goal. And with that being the case, whenever you're trying to find those people, if you're not a good car salesman and you can't sell your product, then you're not going to get people to jump on board and, and even try to help. So, you know, it's going to be difficult at that point. Um, and I, I honestly, I suggest before you start jumping in trying to create your own team and trying to create your vision, join somebody else's team, see how they operate. Don't go in there with the idea of, well, I can just go in there and see what they're doing and just copy it. What if they're doing it wrong? Um, and you go in there, you can't go into a, uh, somebody else's team with the expectation that you're not going to stick around to the end. Go in there and give them, you know, the, the opportunity to to excel. If you expect them to fail, then they're going to fail. You're going to end up sabotaging everything you do and what you're doing to try to help them, and you're going to do more harm than good. So join somebody else's team and understand that there's ways of doing things and then I look at it like this you can go on Trello set up a board and show your you know you know make it available to the public for everybody to see this is what my game is going to be and this is the the development um, uh, sequence of events and this is what's going to happen and here's what's going to be and, and you know what Honestly, the public doesn't need to know what you're working on. At some point, they do. But, honestly, whenever you're still trying to get the team sorted, then there's no point in advertising to the public that, hey, we have this really cool game. It's just blowing false hope, you know. And I've had people that flat out refuse to work on my project because, oh, well, if you don't have a Trello, and I do have a Trello board, and it's just for developers and you know I, I took my time to specifically lay out things uh, and, and lay it out to where this is where we're going this is what we need this is the current needed items and, and everything else and nobody that wanted to join a team would even it was like trying to, to you know ask for money I mean I'm just asking you you want to help well here's what what I need and try to get anybody to do anything towards your project because everybody has that mentality of my project's more important than yours is. And like, oh yes, I'd love to help you with your, your game project. And every time you, you're trying to do anything on your own game project and they say, okay, well, you know, hey, can you do this for me? Oh yeah, I can do that a month later. You know, well, I need it by this weekend. Oh, okay, yeah, no problem. A month later, I'm like, um... 
why are you mad at me? Well, you said you'd have it done by this weekend, and here it is a month later, and you still haven't even said you're working on it. And, you know, people just won't stay motivated towards working on your, your shared project if it doesn't uh, live along their alignment. So it's very, very difficult to keep people motivated to share your your goals and ambitions and in your dream to get your project going you know, if they don't already have the motivation to do it you know I've had over the last two years I've had people join and leave join and leave join and leave and the amount of work that I can get done in a single day by myself without anybody bothering me will amount to a hundred times more than anybody else has turned in work-wise that's tried to be a part of my team. And it's pretty sad. It really is. Because it's difficult to get someone, they, they sound enthusiastic, oh yes, I want to work for your team and, I, and we can do this, this is going to be great. And then they spend 90% of their available time working in Unreal Engine 4 and spent working on their own freaking projects instead of what they agreed to help you with yours. And again, it's really frustrating. So, count on a lot of disappointment whenever you first get started. Don't rely on anybody else to, to jump in and, and do things that you can do yourself. Unless they fully, you know, say, okay, yes, I sure, I, your, your vision is amazing, you know. <laughs> It's so difficult to, to keep motivated people. So I, I work like this. You know, I pretty much have to give up on building my own particular game project simply because, honestly, and I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way, but I honestly would rather do what I'm doing right now. Just keep working on my own project doing my own thing and helping people along the way I enjoy helping people but you know if somebody wants to join my, my team and share my vision what's up Lex then I'm, I'm all for it you know and all I ask for people to do on my team is if you're going to be on my team do some damn work if you say that you're going to do something and, and you're going to you know do it, do it, you know, it's trying to hold people to their word when you're not paying them, it's difficult, I understand that. Let's see here, I'm going to change this about a thousand times here. More focused in on what I'm saying than actually what I'm doing. I need to cross here. And I could make a cross here, or I could use one. I think I'll just make one because I need to put my, my scope in here. Now here's the primary vision for my project and I, I've thrown this back out there again for people to understand is what my project goal is to create a system it is primarily a social gathering point where people can come together but you also use it as a launching platform for playing games so the whole point is I want people to come in be able to hang out watch YouTube videos that are streaming live or hang out and have a party and go to the club and get you know uh, a YouTube uh, person or Twitch person who's streaming their music or whatever their performances will be streamed live into the, the, the actual thing um, I'm working on you trying to pay attention. Just listen. You'll understand what's going on. Keep up with what's going on with current events here, brah. So, you know, my project is going to have a core system of pretty much every kind of combat that you can think of. And it's going to have... Shooting combat, first person, third person combat, um, shooting, grenades, snipers, um, swords, shields, throwing knives, bow, arrow, 
spears, whatever, all forms of combat will be represented in the core background architecture of the game. So the whole point is whoever's working on my team is to come in, let's work on getting all the different types of combat in and working. And what we'll do is we will create these, these core systems and work on the maps. Work on, you know, maps are not really that important right off, off the get-go. But work on the, the central core systems. The sit-down-in-a-chair mechanism, the, the movie theater, the, the nightclub, the, the mechanics, the emote systems, the combat systems, and just utilizing test maps to where, you know, we don't need anything special at first because we're just focusing on getting the core system of the game working. And then once the core is developed, then anybody who wants to be part of the team and has been contributing towards the team then can focus in on making a freaking map is pretty much all they really have to do and then we integrate the um oh, sorry about the sniffles the the core stuff and once the core is done we can actually all then jump together and work on each other's stuff and knock out these different game modes like you know, we're going to do a World War II version, or a sci-fi shooter, or we're going to do um, a whatever. Once all the core combat systems are already ironed out, then all we really have to do then is focus in on the map, focus in on um, tying up any loose ends that need to be tied up. And like I said, I'm just trying to find people who are willing to actually work and work towards a common goal. Point five and negative twenty-five. There, there's my cheesy little cross here. It sucks, but it works. But I do need to make sure that I've got variable set up in here. Use cross here. Compost and save. So, like I said, my, my concept of having a team is, I need the event tick, is that. But, again, you know, if you guys want to talk about what the, you know, I, I posted the name and the, the title of the video, uh, what we're going to be talking about while I'm just working in the background on, on my thing here. Um... The idea of team concepts, working together as a team, what do you need to do, how do you get people to join you. The number one thing is you have to be a good car salesman. Because honestly, if you can't get somebody else to fall in love with your theme and, and want to be part of that team, it's kind of hard to keep people motivated when you can't give them a paycheck. And honestly, you know, and I don't mean anything negative about people that have wanted to work on my team. You're not going to get a paycheck until I get a paycheck. And honestly, none of the people that have come to work for me have earned a paycheck. So <laughs> it's one of those things where if you're going to join a team, be prepared to be part of the, the, the team. But if you want to be able to have other people to work on your project, you need to come up with a structured system on how to uh, do that. Okay, I'm going to work on the emote system, or I'm going to work on the um, the combat system for shooting. Um, would you work on a grenade system, or would you work on a grenade launcher, or would, you know? and having a method of being able to split the work. And the way that I do things may not be the best thing for everybody, but because I've had so many unreliable people try to join my team and not do any damn work, I've had to break it up into components where, honestly, anybody working on my project doesn't need to have any assets whatsoever. They can be working on a blank project with 
UE4 mannequin and the basic animation system. Third person animation um, uh, system and animation starter pack is all you really need to do if you're going to do anything animation work for me. You don't need anything special because I'm not going to give somebody a thousand dollars worth of assets and then they just do nothing and run away with the freaking assets for free. So you really got to earn somebody else's trust if you're going to work on somebody else's team. And if you're going to be the head of the team, you've got to deserve that trust. And, you know, that's the other thing, too. And you have to take it step by step and play it by ear a lot, too. And, honestly, sorry, I'm half paying attention to what I'm doing and, and what I'm saying here. So what's, what, what's some, some thoughts from the, the peanut gallery here? What you guys think? I mean, would you work for somebody else that you don't share their vision? You guys got to chat too, you know. Seriously, though, I mean, if you were to join a team, what would you look for in a team that you're trying to join? some shy people. So answer the question what I'm asking and join the conversation. Would you join if I so Lex if I said you know if you asked to join my team, would you join my team if, you know, you want to work on your project? Everybody wants to work on their own project. But if I said, if you want to join my team, you have to stop working on your project. Well, you're not paying attention. If you didn't know I asked a question, I asked it three times. Um... So, that's the thing, is getting your people to actually pay attention and, and actually do some work. If you joined my team, Lex, and said, okay, I want to join your team, I want to join your team, I want to be part of your team, and then I ask you to turn in some work, okay, this is the work that needs to be done, I need it by tomorrow. Oh yeah, no problem, I'll do it. Um, you'd understand though if, you know, I said, well, I need it by tomorrow night. You could either say, oh, I'm not going to be able to turn it in by tomorrow night. Then, you know, okay, no problem, I'll get it, I'll do it myself. You know, most of the thing that I ask for my other teammates to do, honestly, is things that I can do myself in five minutes. And then after waiting you know, three days for them to turn something in that would take five minutes to do, um, and they don't turn it in, they don't understand why I get pissed off. If you asked me to do something, and you knew that you could do it in 15, 20 minutes, and you said, I can you do something? Oh, yeah, I'll do it. And you ask me to do something. I say, sure, I'll do it. Well, if you then tell me that I need it 
tonight. Can you get it to me within an hour? Sure, no problem. Two days later, I still haven't turned it in. Would you be mad at me? None of my team has done anything. And that was part of what I was saying earlier is over the last two years, everybody that's joined my team was full of piss and vinegar for the you know the first week or so, and then they never turn in anything. And I've had a couple guys that actually did turn in stuff, and um, one of them was a map. I'm not going to call out names. You people know who you are, but and I'm not saying you're terrible people or anything, but you know one of them I asked for a map, and when I asked for you know the, the application map to get done, he did it, and. It was okay, and then I, in the interview process, I pointed out things that he did wrong in the creation of it, and you know, especially using BSP geometries. And that was the thing: is make me a map. Don't use any assets. Create everything yourself using BSP geometries and and basic items. Don't don't use any any assets. And, you know, he did it. He turned it in. And then I showed him, well, this is what you did wrong. And it's like, okay, you understand, though, why I'm asking you, you know, telling you that this is wrong. And everything was, was okay. Everything was cool. Everything was agreed upon. But doing BSP geometry should be a dur done a certain way. And I've showed this a dozen times of, like, whenever you, you put down a, a cube and you go over here and you put a material on there and then you try to stretch it out you see what happens is the material gets stretched whereas if you use a BSP geometry you put it down and with the BSP geometry if you put a cube down and you use the brush settings to change the dimensions of it then the material itself is smooth and it doesn't get stretched so when I show someone the correct way of doing things so that it could actually even be used as a production level item made from just BSP geometries you would expect that um, they would listen and you know, this individual worked on on the map for days and days and days and he'd send me um, prototype versions of it and like okay it looks good but here's the thing I like your design I like your theme I like everything and the way the map feels but you did your BSP geometries incorrectly and he'd work for a few more days and turn something else back in and he still didn't fix the BSP geometries the way that I, I showed him to do it and I ended up spending about two or three hours rebuilding his entire map from every just about every item in the map that he put in there I had to replace because the BSP geometries were done incorrectly and materials were stretched and torn and everything else and so whenever I got done rebuilding everything from the ground up it looked relatively decent but he I think took offense to the fact that um, I, I ripped his map apart because I asked for it done a certain way and it, it wasn't done correctly and I wasn't being a dick about the way I was doing everything but honestly if you're not going to learn that I don't need you to to be my map maker if you can't understand that using a BSP geometry to create a floor how hard is it to go like that and, and shape your freaking BSP geometry to fill your floor section like, oh well it's a little bit too far in the X well let's let's change that to 500 you know oh that's better and you know well I need it a little bit shorter okay big gray blocks 100 100 100 well they're broken down in, into 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 so this light gray big block is 100 by 100 so is this dark gray block these little small ones are 10 by 10 and if you're trying to to make something work then the hell well how much do I need to resize it by to fit this parameter here well I need to take 10 off and that'll that'll get that it's pretty simple 
laying out your map so that everything is inside of a folder. You know, doing whatever you're trying to work for somebody else, you have to follow their direction because if you don't follow their direction, it becomes more difficult for them to um, A, trust you, and B, integrate their your work to make the project work. So that's so why some people I tell them, when you're going through, just create a folder with your name on it and just submit it. I'll make it work into the project. However, the other problem is um, I, I have other people that I can trust to do work and I tell them, okay, well, you're not doing anything that involves using the player character. So, like right now, um, I'm setting up the basics, the starting point of a shooting system. So, what I've done so far was I've just converted over to where now you come into this mode, you're in the mode to start shooting. I'll change the animation blueprint over, I'll fix the camera setup, and then now I've got a crosshair going. So, you can see I've got a line trace firing with the left mouse button. You can come out of that mode. Um, then need um, gunshot sounds. So assets still burns my butt that I actually accidentally deleted my freaking project. I liked that that game too. It was starting to get fun. It new folder that was the other uh, one where you could do the different emotes and then change the number of spawns and everything else and I accidentally deleted the damn thing like an idiot I'm always looking for people to join I've been trying to get people to join my team for two years now and I haven't been able to find reliable help what I'll probably do is take a break here shortly and then restart the stream and change it to where it's just actually a recruiting drive. Because if you follow what I'm saying that I want to do with this project, and if I build, I'm building this core game system where um, if you want to join my team and help me get the core items done and that kind of stuff, then great, let's do that. But then once we get done with that core system, we all have a, a good core that we can work with to where now Lex wants to go over and do paintball. And so we jump in there and we start laying out the, the map and the footprint of the map and building the props and making sure we got everything together and then say, okay, well, we need um, um, the, this animation system. Okay, no problem. It's just you tell it which animation blueprint you want to use for whatever type of combat you're using. And then, okay, well, we got this list of weapons here um, for Lex's paintball gun. We're going to use, um, let's use these weapons. I think that would be great. Uh, let's see here. Actually, there's one here I think would be kind of cool if I remember which one it was. There you go. There's your sci-fi needle gun or whatever else and it's a syringe gun but um so let's see I'm gonna play a sound at some point I gotta come back in here and do can shoot can shoot because I want to disable shooting all right, you schmuckaroos need to move somewhere else. I got partial shit that I'm working on here. Filling up space while I'm trying to get this part done. So, can set, can shoot. Control C and control V. I need people who will share my vision and understand that once my portion of my vision is done, I need people who can do everything. I don't need someone that's limited. Well, I can do maps. I don't give a fuck. 
everybody can do a map. Hell, I suck at them, but I can do maps. Um, and honestly speaking, yes, maps are very important at some point. Um, at this point in development, maps are so low on the food chain because it doesn't really matter how good your map is if your gameplay sucks. So I need jack of all trade. I need someone that can do everything. Literally do everything. If I say, hey, set me up with a grenade launcher system. I need people who are going to be able to work fast and know how to do everything. And, yeah, it's like, oh, well, you know. And now I can't shoot. Lovely. Now we need some sound. And, like, you, you've made good progress, okay? You've been picking up things, and you've been learning things, and you're making good progress. Hey, I'm not complaining. Of course, I'm not hiring you. So, and it's not because I don't like you or anything. It's just because you you would be able to, to keep up with everything. You know, all the process of everything going on. So, um, but I'm just saying is you've made a lot of progress, and you know I've heard some people say some negative things about about your stuff there, and. I will defend you. I will back you up on because you know what? The ones that I've seen that were complaining about your stuff, I asked them to show me their game. And you know what they couldn't do? They couldn't show me a game. <laughs> so it's like, show me that you can do better than what he's done, and then maybe you can complain about it. You've tried. You've had fun doing what you're doing. And you're learning more and more each day. So you know what? I would rather see someone that puts their heart into something and tries their very best. Even if it's not perfect, doesn't matter. You tried. You had fun. And that's all that matters. But you're making a paintball game how is that any different than what I'm doing right now right now I'm setting up a shooting system it's the same thing you gotta do in a paintball game right you gotta be able to shoot you gotta have animations you gotta have the uh, the character you gotta have the the sound playing for whenever you're shooting the gun so you you know you can do it like this and using a line trace by channel or you know you can use it as a like you were doing as a projectile spawner. Um, let's see here. I'm just going to grab a reference to the mesh. And it's no different than what you were doing. This style of shooting for me is going to be um, line trace. But I also plan on having a grenade launcher in here where when you fire, it actually shoots a projectile. So it's no different than what you're doing. So why couldn't you do it? You're already working on it. You're already doing it. You don't have the assets behind you. You're trying to make your own assets, and I'm using pre-made assets. Like, see, this is some um, Cindy Studio stuff. I don't actually have to um, do anything with assets because I already made it they're, they're already done all I have to do is just put the pieces of the puzzle together and then work on some refinements so I mean hell I'm halfway done with the basic part of the shooting system here um, I'm just getting it shooting then I'll go back and do the multiplayer replication Yeah, see that that's that's all I had to do was get a reference to my mesh, get world location, play sound at location, and just import your sounds. I mean I just did all that. I mean I've done this whole shooting system so far. 
It's taking me 10 times as long to do it because I'm sitting here explaining everything else instead of what I'm actually doing. Do I have any particle effects? Particles, uh, booster flame, fire, exhaust. What is that? I don't have all my usual stuff here. Well, I did not say there's anything wrong with that. There's not a thing wrong with it. That actually looks like it potentially could be cool here. Um, what does booster flame look like? All right, so I need a particle effect. I'm not using starter content, and this is the only one that I've got so far. Um, I could pull from other asset packs, but I'm trying to limit the asset packs that's in this right now so that I can actually focus in on getting stuff together. So I'll make a temporary particle effect. This should just be a regular fire fire. So I think... Um, I don't see anything. Okay. Yeah, that's like ring coming down. Well, I've got my Christmas game, but I haven't had anybody make su any suggestions on what to add next. And mine's turned into a snowball fight. And even incorporated yellow snow. And so I want to ask about doing a snow forge and collecting snow. And I've already done that. Just haven't tied in the animation yet. But nobody else has made any more suggestions towards that. And like I said, you guys make suggestions and I'll make it happen. But I leave it up to the, the crowd to come up with the ideas. So I would ask anybody for any damn money. I said, just ideas. Tell me what you want to see. We'll get it going. And I'll put the game together. I'll put it on HIO. And we can get together and have a ball. Shooting each other or throwing snowballs at each other or whatever else. I'm not going to keep doing projects and be doing. I'm going to use this. I'm going to modify this particle effect. I'm going to duplicate this. FX impact. Go in here. And it is only that. So. Try getting it to loop one time and okay. So, emitter duration, let's cut the time to 0.3. No, let's do 0.1. That's actually not bad. Um, zero point. Zero five. Um, not bad, actually. No, I think we'll stick it back at, at five. So yeah, this is this is no different than for me what I'm doing right now for your your paintball game would be doing basically the same thing here. So I just created my own particle effect by modifying a different particle effect. Hmm. So let's go back in here and we want to spawn emitter at location. Location is going to be the impact point. The emitter is the one I just created. Impact. FX impact. You guys can buy me that for Christmas, by the way. FX air guns. The FX impact. X. It's got to be the X version. Impact X. Um, silver. 700 millimeter. And 22 or 25 caliber will be good. Or 30, but I would prefer 22 or 25, preferably 25. But they're, they're interchangeable barrel systems, so if you just got me one in 22, 
I'll buy my own 25 and 30 caliber conversion kits. So, so now we got our, our emitter. Let's go back in here, take a look at it. So we get a little wee puff of smoke whenever the bullets hit. So now I don't need my line trace line. So now we've got a sound and particle effect. That's not going to be the, the permanent particle effect. Yeah, well, it's not even working 100% of the time anyway, but whatever. It's, it's something. Um, players, do we have health? Yes, we do. Uh, let's see here. So we need to apply damage. And... For now, we're just going to do our usual 25 damage. Damage actor needs to come back from hit actor to damaged actor. And compost and save. So now we're doing damage with our shot, too. So that's good enough to get it started with. All right, so has nothing to do with anything else. I just wanted to get the shooting, the basic shooting done. So as soon as I go into the mode to be able to start shooting, the next thing I want to do is change the animation blueprint and that kind of crapola. Nothing's replicated right now just because, hey, I got a lot of refinement to do. Everything was working lovely and was enjoying that project. I really was. Um, this was actually the, the game that I was talking about that I was... I didn't have a lot of work in it, but it was starting to get fun. So I still have this one available, and it's still available to play, just the production has stopped on it because I screwed a pooch. So you've got the, um, I never bought in any of the other characters yet, the, any other assets yet. Everything was working nice and smooth and everything was replicated. Everything was doing lovely and I frickin' deleted a damn project. That's the one where you can hit the Q key and do the uh, the emote, or you can change it. And I hadn't got to where I was starting to do the um, the updated um, menus yet. Was getting ready to work on the menu system, and it's like, shit, We're running out of room. So I gotta refine the hard drive a little bit and and that kind of stuff. And yeah, like oh no, this is not the you know. I forgot that I called it this. So, you can hit the tab key. You can turn on the bot spawner. So, if I want to turn on one, now it'll spawn one bot. You hit the V key to go into. Yeah, I know. It, you know, shit happens. You hit the V key to go into shooting mode. Get your little ugly MP5, right click goes into scope mode, because everybody uses a sniper scope on their MP5. So you shoot this guy, he'll automatically respawn. There's a health kit there. Um, got a nice shadow right there, but everything up here doesn't have a shadow to it. But you could... So this one's still playable. You can download this one and play this one still. Um... But, yeah, I kind of accidentally deleted the wrong project. You can hit tab and let's screw it. Let's make it 10 bots. And then, you can see, they're just, it's raining bots here. And we can say, okay, well, now that I've got them, hit tab. You can hit remove bots, close the window. 
And now you can run around and do your thing and uh -huh, catch me if you can. Then run over here and jump to the teleporter. And then shoot him in the back. Shoot him in the ass. Once you click on that remove bots, it turns off the spawning ability. So as you're goofing around, like, if you want to have a meeting or something like that, okay, we're going to have a meeting here. Let's um, turn off the bots. You know, y'all kill everything that, that's red, and let's get to the meeting. And then everybody can sit down and chill out and do your thing. I already had a new map. Oh, I see you hiding over there. you hanging out, chilling on the wall over there. So yeah, this was a project I accidentally deleted. It sucks, because, you know, I was starting to have fun with this one. I'd actually go in here and just play that one just to kind of goof around. Um, let's save all on this project. Let me come back to this one. And the project that we're doing in the basic training series, it's starting to get a little fun, too. I got to do the, um, the spawning system figure out if we're going to do anything with the spawning system or just have static numbers of bots. The um, the current way it's set up in this project so far is it's still single player. Um, don't show again, don't restore, whatever, kiss my buttocks. So just to kind of show where it was going with this project right here with the um, the basic training project really tacky uh, menu you got your um, animated guy on the, the menu go your settings menu I want 1280 well, 720 what about um, 10 1920 by 1080 now let's run it in 720p because we keep it a small menu go back to there as you can see it just cycles through the menu right here and then click on start game takes a little bit longer to load while you're in this but so it's the um, first person template so you have no legs but you can see you've got uh, upper right hand corner you've got your your shot count and I've got billboard up here as well how many how many shots you fired how many hits how many misses and how many kills so like home cheese right here Fired four shots, four hits, no misses, one kill. And he has loot. There's no real loot yet, but. Eight shots, eight hits, zero misses. So, like this guy right over here. Oh, you can see the sun. Uh, I did go ahead and put a, um, a moving sun in here. You watch the shadows. So it cycles through day and night time. That's right. Come to daddy. Boom. So yeah. And if you were to actually miss. It counts your shots fired, your hits, and your misses. And then as you're going through and you go through all the buildings, go through all your stuff, and you, you kill the last bad guy. Yay, I win. At the end, goes to a result screen. So, there we go. Battle results. Number of kills, four. Shots fired. Hits made. And I still need to add the misses to this, but you can hit play again and go right back into the, the, the battle and Yay, there's much rejoicing. You can hit escape and go back to the main menu. And there you go. So that one's coming along nicely. Um, but I kind of got PO'd that uh, my other project got 
deleted by accident. So with the Christmas project, you guys have got to let me know what else you want to see in this, or else I'm not going to keep developing on stuff that, you know, this is supposed to be community-driven for this project here. If you guys are not going to come up with suggestions to do with this, then I'm just not going to do anything else with it. I'll delete this one and move on. Plus, remember, tomorrow, smoke out. Go watch that video. If you haven't watched the, the video talking about the smoke out, go and watch that video. Well, that's tomorrow. All right, so... We've got a little dude here. And... Oh, I can't throw any snowballs because I don't have any damn snow. So you actually have to, and I haven't done the uh, the animation to crouch down yet. We hit E to start gathering snow, which is the blue meter you see coming up there. And now you can throw snowballs. Hit the V key and kind of zoom in a little bit, and you can see a little bit better how you're throwing your snowballs. And it's kind of random the way you're throwing, so you know your accuracy is a little bit off. But you can right click and throw yellow snowballs. Um, yeah. But when you run out of, you only get four shots of yellow snowballs. But you come over here and get you an energy drink, some orange juice, or, you know, a soda. And you can recharge that P meter and be able to start throwing more. There's coffee and another soda. But, uh, 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 uh used up all my yellow snow well oh I can get drunk and the more bottles of booze you drink the the more blurry your your screen gets and it's just short term but then you can also just like you can keep doing that or you can deploy your little snow fort and have something to hide behind then like I said I still gotta add in the the crouching animation to it but you can crouch behind here if you want to and you can just gather more snowballs because it uses up a good bit of snowballs to do it. So now you can hide behind your your snow fort and throw snowballs. And the snow fort will actually disappear over time. And I was working on the damage system for it to where it takes damage and if, you, if it gets damaged enough it'll go away as well. So that's where I was on, on this project. Yes, the yellow snowballs do twice the damage. And the alcohol, well, I'll probably change the booze to give you a more of a fill on, on it. So you have to, like, go through and... If you're going to drink booze, you're going to lose your vision. But you probably pick up... You know, more yellow snow. You have to pee more if you drink alcohol. Yeah, see, the, the snow fort went away. So, yeah, that's where I was on this project. But like I said, you know, and I was getting some billboards done, some advertising, and things like that for it. Um, but yeah, that's where I was going on, on this project. But nobody suggested anything, so I'm sitting here waiting for you guys to suggest things. I said I start these projects to do a community based project, and um, yeah, wait on you guys to come up with um, ideas and concepts and things like that on a community based project, and that's the Hacksmiths, and that is a community-based game, so. I gotta get rid of some of these extra projects here. Um, I mean, a lot of these are actually like that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. <laughs> <coughs> was all, um, and that one. So, um, doing stuff with John Galt. Hey, dude's talented, so. 
You got some good shit. I, don't, I need to get rid of that one. I get a bunch. The majority of these right here are not actual projects that I'm working on. The only one that I really need in here is my simple multiplayer Steam template, um, the training one, Rebirth, Hexmas, and don't even need this one. This is one I was starting to do. With, you know, I need that one too, but well, this is one that I was actually working on for somebody else, and he keeps going away and say, "Oh, no, no, I won't be away for a month at a time." You know, and he disappears for a month or two at a time, comes back, and. Any most to the the snowball fight? I'm doing the fully emote system for the um, the rebirth project. I'm not sure which map I was actually doing. Um, but yeah, that's right here. One boy just get all up in my grill until I shoot him. He falls down, and when he comes back up, he's a freaking zombie. Well, he's still a zombie. But then I had created a cure system to where you could come over and administer the antidote and he would go from being a um, a, a zombie back to a human again. So that's what I was starting to work with uh, for somebody else and he just quit showing up. So I'm not going to keep making shit for people and they don't come back anymore. animation layout map and this is all the the zombie characters that I pulled in here to work with on this one so you had like this one from this pack and then the the zombie equivalent of you know tourists and the the zombie hot dog dude there and, and so he was strangled by his own condiments fast food worker girl and yeah you know, so I'd, I'd sorted through all of the different zombies that I had from Cindy Studios and all of the regular normal versions of the characters like the hipster chick and the zombie hipster chick and hipster male and zombie hipster male so and this dude right here he, he'd be thugging and now he got his pants hanging down around his ankles so went through and did all that and started doing the animation systems and the damage systems and the antidote system where the whole concept of this project for this person was um, that essentially you had civilians doing their normal thing and the zombies started coming into town and, you know, as they started attacking the civilians, the civilians became zombies and you could go around and, you know, after, you know, the civilian dies, they come back as a zombie but you can go around with your cure using a um, like a a dart gun or a syringe gun or whatever else, and be able to shoot them with um, the darts to to administer the cure to turn them back into regular humans again. And the whole concept of the battle idea was it's a war of zombies versus civilians, and the civilians are unarmed; they they can't fight back and. They're just stupid, like well, kind of like normal civilians are. Um, so they keep getting bitten by zombies and turned back into zombies again. So it's a war of, of attrition. You're trying to get rid of all the freaking zombies, so there's no zombies left to turn the civilians back into zombies. And of course, if you get bit, you get turned into a zombie and game over. But um, you're trying to, instead of murdering and destroying and chopping off the heads and destroying zombies you're actually um, applying a uh, a way of turning them back into humans again. You're not destroying them. You're you're actually saving the zombies. A little bit different concept. And hell, I may say, the, hell with the other game and go back to making this one. Because the more I think about it, the more fun it sounds. So, And you're actually not killing anything. There's no... Well, there's kind of some violence, but, you know... You're actually saving humanity by not killing things. So I'm gonna take a break for a little bit, and when I come back, I might actually work on this project a little bit more. Just I don't know, just back and forth on what I want to work on tonight. Still trying to get through this damn cold, and I've still had a lot of sleep problems. And whenever you don't get sleep, your brain just doesn't want to work the way it should. 
So that's why I haven't been doing anything serious work-wise and haven't been doing any videos. So This video had no purpose whatsoever. This was a shit video. The way I wanted to talk about the topic that I wanted to talk about that other people wanted to talk about. So if nobody's here to, to talk about it, then I'm just going to keep right on rocking and rolling. So, you know, I'm going to take a break, and hell, I may come back and work on this project some. Yeah, the um, the the snowball game is free for all right now, um, but was gonna do an optional team system. Um, but for right now, it, it's easier to do a free for all because you know just everybody versus everybody. It's not that difficult to add teams in, but I can focus in on other parts of it while leaving it a free for all. So, I mean, I could set up a respawn system, and that's cool, but. Um, honestly, Last Man Standing is the easy way to go because, hell, pretty much you can do a death sequence and then destroy Actor and then poof, you're gone, you're out of here. Whoever Last Man Standing is is the winner. You know, that's a good idea too. Capture the Snowman or, um, you know, you could have like something, you know, like the carrot that goes on the snowman or the hat for the snowman and you gotta go and, and steal somebody else's hat or whatever and or, you know some kind of mode like that but the classic game modes capture the flag team deathmatch deathmatch those are classic game modes and they'll never go out of style you know you can alter the, the capture the flag thing you've got the capture the flag and you've got the um, control post where instead of it being a flag you're actually um, old school battlefield style where you go and you try to control the the checkpoint and while your team controls that checkpoint you can spawn there and that kind of stuff well, yeah there, there's just so many variations of the capture the flag mode that it's just a classic classic style let me actually let me say, go back to working on this one. This is actually a good single player thing, but the person I was doing this for, I was making it multiplayer. So that, you know, his viewers and his people and anybody that want to join in, they could join in and fight the zombie horde. The other concept idea was if it is multiplayer, um, everybody starts off the humans are on the same team every player is on you know, the, you're a human but if you get taken out by the zombies then you become a zombie and now you're on a zombie team and it then turns into again last man standing on the the human or the, the live people team so you have to fight to the last man and whoever the last person left alive is on the human team, well, you know, that was one concept you have to think about. But honestly, I think that um, if you can go through with this particular game mode where it's humans versus zombies or live versus dead, and pretty much, if you think about it, there could be a mix. If you want to do it team versus team, if you want to play on the zombie team, then, and I'm on the the live people team. There might be ten zombies and ten live people, and if the live people administer the cure, then um, if there's no zombies left, still zombies, they've all been cured. Then the live team wins, or if the zombies, you know convert everybody else on the map to zombies then the zombies win so it's still same basic concept but you know it's team versus team or it could be cooperative yeah I never played that so I played Counter-Strike whenever it was new which is like what 15 years ago so Back when it was cool, back when it was new, back when it was cutting edge. <laughs> well, so yeah, this was the game that I was working on for somebody else, and 
Hell, the more I think about it, it sounds like a fun game to play. Kind of wanted to focus on on Christmas and happy stuff, but you know what? I could do a Christmas map on this, too. We'll put a Christmas tree in it and some lights. Hey, look, it's festive. But, you know, get back to the zombie. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these games have overstayed their welcome. Um, the original Counter-Strike. Battlefield should have ended after Battlefield 2. Everything that came out in the Battlefield trilogy after Battlefield 2, when they brought up Battlefield 3... It ruined the franchise from what it started out as. It is nothing like what it started out as. And had a lot of fun with Battlefield 1942 and all the different asset, you know, the, the extra expansions. Um, secret weapons and Road to Rome and that kind of stuff. And then Battlefield 2 when it came out. Um, because it was based off of the Desert Combat mod. And those guys were hired to actually build Battlefield 2 and it was fun we had a lot of fun playing Battlefield 2 however they got cool and creative and when Battlefield 3 came out ruined the whole franchise Battlefront I eh, was never a fan but when Battlefront Star Wars came out it wasn't bad I still wasn't going to play it because EA games but yeah Crackstar with their decision to make Red Dead Redemption 2 and Red Dead Redemption console only. I'm not a console peasant. I'm PC Master Race and always will be. Yeah. Like freaking Duke Nukem, Rise of the Triad. Those were freaking games, man. Shadow Warriors. You know, for multiplayer games. Those DOS 4GW games were the shit. Because you're talking about um, RTS files. Kids nowadays don't know about no RTS files. Shit. Rise of the Triad, Duke Nukem, and Shadow Warriors did it also. But we did more with um, Duke Nukem 3D and with um, Shadow War not Shadow War, uh, Duke Nukem 3D and Rise of the Triad. Um... Yeah, I was born in 1968, so. Um, yeah, an RTS file was, I think it was 10 different sound emotes or sound files. And you hit, like, Control F1 or whatever, and it would, I, I can't remember what it was, it's been so long since we played that stuff, but you do that and it plays a sound file, like, you know, take that or there was a, there was always an official sound one that came with it and then we would go in there and make our own RTS files and we would use clips from Ren and Stimpy or Beavis and Butthead or whatever you know like Beavis screaming ah, you're trying to touch my wiener or he's trying to touch my wiener or just other crap like that land parties kids today don't know shit about no damn land party getting together at Bob's house or Fred's house or whoever's house and daisy chaining your freaking F type connectors and before RJ45 network connections and routers and things you daisy chained you had basically your computer to connect to my computer you used F type connections and cable TV line essentially and then whoever was at the end of that chain had to have a terminator on there so that it would close the loop and everybody who joined the network had to be daisy chained together so that we could all see each other on the network and you know you're stretching cable tv lines all throughout the freaking house and and power strips and i had to see their freaking light bill for the damn month because that one one weekend where everybody brought their computers over and you know for one day or for you know two day event like um we were doing for a while at one location we do a two-day event where we come in there set up everything leave it in there it's a secure facility with that we didn't have to worry about things go home come back the next morning everything's still set up so you just jump right in and go um and then it was you know the my pc is better than your pc my penis is bigger than your penis and oh i've got this video card and i've got this motherboard and i've got this ram and you know it was always a 
you know, bragging rights on who had the better computer. And then, you know, when you're playing the games, we were saying some of the most horrible things to each other. But we're having such a great time. We're in the same room, yelling, throwing things, and just cussing. And, yeah, children children were not allowed at our LAN parties. It was an adult-only thing because the language being used, yeah, you don't want your 7-year-old hearing daddy call um, somebody a, a steaming bag of what, yeah, I won't mention on, on here because I don't want to offend anybody's delicate nature. Nowadays, people are too damn soft. They get offended so easily. He called me a festering testicle wart. Oh, no. I'm going to go shoot myself because I'm weak and feeble. Fucking fragile people nowadays. All right, I'm getting the hell off my soapbox on that shit. But, yeah. Take a break for a little bit, and I'll come back. And if you guys want me to, I'll stream while I'm working on this. And uh, I like the concept of this better than most games nowadays are all about blow this up, shoot this person, you know, destruction and mayhem and killing and murder and theft and sticking, you know, TNT on a corpse or teabagging or or whatever. Oh, focus! Here we go. And everything, video game wise, for it to be fun, has to have some negative connotation behind it. You know, and not that I'm not saying it's not fun. You know, to go out there and play GTA Five and rip somebody out of a car or or shoot somebody or whatever. <laughs> Games don't have to necessarily be about hardcore violence to be fun. So I'm trying to come up with ideas. I'm not anti-gun. That's for damn sure. I mean, seriously. I mean, keep shit locked and loaded on my damn desk at all times. I have my everyday carry gun. I got stuff that I keep on my desk for home protection. I keep, you know, I, I'm not anti-gun. That's for damn sure. Um, I'm anti-stupid. And I'm anti-violence. Um, and, and, you know... I'm all about random acts of kindness. You want to do something good? Next time you, you you get yourself in the habit of doing this, and I do this all the time, this is something that I just do. I, I made it part of my everyday nature, is what I do is every time that I'm going in or out of a store or a restaurant or wherever else, whenever I open up the door, before I let go of that door, I look behind me to see if anybody else is coming and if they are, I take a few seconds out of my day to hold the door for somebody. I don't care if it's a man or a woman. I don't care if they're white or if they're black. I don't give a shit what color your skin is or, or what's dangling between your legs. I don't care. It's a random act of kindness. It doesn't take but a couple seconds out of my day to stop and hold the door for somebody and be polite. And then, you know, if somebody's does that to me I make sure that I say thank you you know it's being courteous to somebody and doing a random act of kindness go out of your way to, to commit random acts of kindness every day hold the door for somebody say thank you see I'm I'm both occasionally I'll do multiplayer like PvP stuff Sometimes I just want to kick back and relax and do PVE. And honestly, if, and I think also with the gaming development world, if you ignore one or the other, you're going to lose out on potential sales. So you always need to be thinking about developing both equally. Because if you only develop PvP only, then you're going to have a group of people that's saying, well, why isn't there any PVE? Why do I play World of Warships more than I play World of Tanks? Um, I don't like anything right now, you know, about either one of them. But we'll just use that as an example. Um, why don't I play World of Tanks versus World of Warships? Okay, I have roughly twenty-five or thirty ships in World of Warships. 
And yes, the additional dock spaces you have to pay for real cash. Same thing in World of Tanks. You have to pay for extra garage slots, which is stupid. Horror gaming, you know. Um, I have around 86, 87, close to 90 tanks in my garage in World of Tanks. I have all these cool tanks over here versus um, World of Warships I have less. Well, World of Tanks does not have a NPC, does not have a PvE mode. It's player versus player only. Whereas World of Warships, I have the option. I can go and do a random battle, which is player versus player. Or I can go and do a co-op battle, which is players versus bots. And they both have their own ups and downs. Um, it's not, you know... A bad way either way sometimes I just don't feel like playing PvP so I have the option there and because that game gives me the option to, to do both I'm gonna play it over the other one because it doesn't have the option for me so as a game developer I think it's in our best interest to a think about both sides of that fence PvP or PvE and co-op versus just PvP only um, and also thinking about our target audience. Who are we targeting our game to besides ourselves? Are we building the game because this is what we want to play? Or are we trying to play something that you want to be the next esports awesomeness? Or you want something that's going to be popular? You want the next Minecraft? Or, you know, you know, whatever. You know, think about your target audience. But think about also the fact that, um, all these 10 year olds that um, pester mommy until mommy throws her credit card at the um, at Sony to get the latest PlayStation game so that the child will just shut up and you, the video games become a pacifier or a babysitter well I can just buy him a new console and a couple of games and I don't have to worry about him he won't come out of his room for the next 8 hours or 12 hours they know that you know that electronic babysitter is going to be taking care of them while they're, they're ignoring their children's lives. So, yeah. So, we don't necessarily have to be creating an environment where they're getting their education from Grand Theft Auto 5 or, you know, yeah, again, getting off my soapbox, my coffee's getting cold, so I'm going to finish my coffee and take a break for a little bit, and I'll probably come back, and I might work on this project a little bit more. The Zombies versus the Living. I don't have a name for it. I'm just creating it. We'll see that the games back then were single-player games that they were creating as a multiplayer team versus team and free for all and capture the flag. They were converting existing games. Yeah. So, I mean, Duke Nukem was a single player game. It was always a single player game. But it had a. You could play multiplayer as an extra mode. It wasn't the main feature of the game. The main game was actually the single player campaign. Same thing with Shadow Warriors. Rise of the Triad, they were all a single player game, but they just, the multiplayer was an additional layer of content. And whenever you're trying to use um, Kali or whatever it was called for early online multiplayer experience with those games, but yeah, um, Duke Nukem was, was a single player game. It just had the option to become a multiplayer game. Um, in fact, you had to run exterior stuff to be able to get it to work correctly over the network. And the multiplayer was LAN-based. It wasn't online-based. There was no internet back then, really, to speak of when that game first came out. Um, I won a few level design contests for Duke Nukem, so... Yeah. All right. Well, let me get out of here. I'll be back shortly. And as I said I'll probably work on this project some more. I need to 
probably sort through. I don't have any weapons or anything in this. This, this is um, the Polygon City Character Pack and the Polygon City Zombies Pack. And there are some weapons. Oh, well, yeah. Um, here in the U.S., if you weren't using land, if you were using modem, yeah, there was... Um, uh, NASCAR, one of the first true NASCAR games was um, you could do dial-up. Your you would actually have to call a server with your phone, your modem, and there was actually a racing league in Hawaii. And if you wanted to race in these three, four, five, six, eight-hour freaking events, you're calling long distance on your phone. There were no cell phones. You were calling long distance on your phone from there to Hawaii, and you might have a that month if you did a three-hour race, you might have a damn hundred and twenty-dollar freaking phone bill because it might have cost you fifty or sixty bucks for that one game to play and that one race. So yeah. All right. Well, I'm, I will be back shortly. Um, so if you guys want to see me work on this project right here and talk about what it is more and start creating the modes for it. I need to come up with some other weapons. The only weapons I've got in here is the fire axe, a machete, um, iron bar, pry bars, a meat cleaver, stuff like that. I need to come up with um, I may snatch the syringe gun or I need to come up with some kind of weapon system for launching um, or shooting uh, tranquil, or not tranquil, but a dart gun essentially. I need a dart gun. Whether it's a, preferably like a pistol or a rifle or whatever for shooting um, a dart into the zombies that contains the cure. So, of the Cindy Studios asset packs, if you guys want to think about that too while I'm, I'm taking my break. Alright, I'll be back shortly. We'll see you soon.